James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 12. James, you see those of us in military fatigues, James is a book about basic training, helping believers to grow. How many of you really want to be better? You just want to be better. Tell somebody, I just want to be better. Amen. I might not be nothing now. I may be the low down, dirty, the worst scoundrel on the block, but I'm here because I want to be. Amen. Want to be better. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth what? Temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of what? His own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will, thank you, Jesus, of his own will, begat he who us how did he do it with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures verse 12 again blessed is the man that endureth what temptation ask the person next to your neighbor are you winning over temptation Amen. Amen. I want to talk about winning, winning over temptation. Now let's get the house straight. Let me search the house. How many of you want to win over temptation? Is there anybody here who want to win? It starts with a want. It starts with a want. You got to want to win. So let's affirm it. Will you tell somebody, I want to win over temptation? All right. Now let's say the hardest thing that I'm going to ask you to say today. Will you say, I want to win over temptation every time? Amen. It's going to take a little more than basic training. It's going to take your whole life in this army here. Winning over temptation. Now, uh, I might add, and I said it in my prayer when I was saying, put away your telephone, get off. The, the devil is going to do everything he can to distract you this morning. I wouldn't be surprised if half the ceiling didn't fall. The devil is going to do everything he can to distract you this morning because I promise you that this is a life-changing word. Last week we talked about uh, victory over trial. How do we, what do we do when we don't know what to do? How do we win over trials? And we found out that we win over trials by asking God for wisdom. Amen. The Bible says if in the midst of our trials, if anybody desires wisdom about what you're going through, let him Ask of God, and God will give you the wisdom. Amen. Amen. Uh, we found out that as it relates to understanding our trials, we found out that we have not the wisdom to deal with trials because we ask not. All we have to do is ask God, and in trials, he will be our friend. Now, Salem, as I study this book and look at James, as far as I can see, there are two primary battles, and we're in a war. That's why we got on army clothes. That's why we got on army. We just don't have on army clothes just to have on army clothes. We have an army clothes on because we're in a war. Will you tell somebody we're in a war? And we got two primary things this morning that we're fighting against. We're fighting against trials 
and we're dealing with or fighting against temptation. Let me hear you say trials, and let me hear you say temptation. If you ever notice trials and temptation, those two words usually go together. Amen. They used to go together. You remember the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Everybody remember that song? There's a line in that song. It says, Have we trials and temptations? Because trials and temptations are twins that usually run together. Are you with me here? All right. What's the difference? What's the difference between a trial and, and a temptation? Here they are. Trials are obstacles or pressures or life situations that come to us from outside of us. Did you hear what I just said? Trials come to us outside of us. You uh, 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 go to work and they give you a pink slip. That's a trial. That's a tragedy, really. <laughs> you come home and your 13-year-old granddaughter is pregnant. That's a, that's a trial. You know what I mean? Something that comes. You, you look up and your neighbors have dumped their garbage in your garbage can. Your neighbors have hooked up their cable to your cable. These are life situations that come to us from the outside. Are you with me here? Temptations are obstacles, battles, enticements that come to us from within. You can't blame your neighbor for your temptation. Are you with me? Y'all know that quiet guy? That quiet guy? I started talking about trials and the neighbor uh, connecting their cable to hockey. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Temptations are real now. And temptations are just as real as trials. Are you with me here? And trials are those things that come to us that we got to deal with from the inside. James is clear about two facts. He says, God sends trials in order to test our faith. God sends trials our way in order to grow us up. And it's time for us. When you reach over and tell somebody, it's time for you to grow up. Amen. You've been a Christian long enough. You shouldn't be whining about the same problems. God used those problems to help us grow up. James says, knowing this, that the trying, in verse 3, the trying of your faith worketh patience. Amen. God sends trials in order to grow us up. However, temptation does not come from God. Don't. Temptation does not come from God. Here's the tricky point, and I'm going to get more into it in a minute. Here's the tricky point. God uses temptation... To grow our faith, he uses temptation to sh that we may be strengthened, but he's not the author of the temptation. All right, I'll get there. I'll get there. Ask the person next to your neighbor. Who then is the author of temptation? Very good, very good. You raise your hand, Pastor, I want to win over temptation. In order for us to win over temptation, we have to know where temptation comes from. And we have to know what is the sender's intention. What is the sender of temptation trying to produce out of that temptation that he has sent? Because we know that through trials, God is trying to do what? Grow us up or strengthen our faith. So we already know that. So when the next time then you come in and the neighbors got their cable hooked up on your cable, you say, okay, all right, all right, let me slow down. Let me be patient. God's growing me up. Amen. 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 The next time somebody just go off on you for no reason at all, that's something that happens to you from without, just slow up and say, okay, all right, okay, God's growing me up. 
God's, God's maturing me. So the first thing, I'm not going to react and say, what you say to me? What you? No, no. I'm going to slow down because I know now where, where this is coming from. I know why this is coming. God is trying to grow me up. Amen. Amen. Uh, but where does temptation come from? Before I answer that, let me pause long enough to say that everybody in this room has fought and will fight temptation. Amen. Everybody in this room will fight temptation. All of us have been in the ring and lost a round or two to temptation. Holy is the Lamb. I said everybody's been in that round. Everybody's been in that ring. Everybody has had a few bouts with temptation. And everybody in this room, we've lost before. I mean, we lost so bad until the referee counted to 39. And we were out, laid out on the canvas. They turned out all the lights in the stadium. All the people left. We still laying there. Are you with me here? All right, let's get started. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man... That does what, Salem? Endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Which, who's going to give it to you? The Lord hath promised to them that love him. All right, James says to his audience, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Because when he wins the victory over temptation... God is going to give him a crown of life. Pam, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. I'm so glad to see you. Now, that makes you think, and James has to become the mind of his listeners, that if God said that I'm blessed when I endure temptation, and if God is going to reward me with a crown of life when I overcome temptation, the logical man, Reverend Stephen, says, therefore, God must be the originator of the temptation. Since he's going to bless me because I overcome the temptation, then the temptation somehow must be a work of his. Are you with me here? Uh, 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 okay, okay, let me go to, let me go to sin, uh, in 1 Corinthians. So when Paul told the Corinthians that every time God shows us grace, he's showing us grace in our sins. And so we sin and God shows us grace. And they said, well, since God's showing us grace, when we sin... We might as well continue sinning to give God a chance to continue. Because if I don't show, if I don't have no sin, if I ain't sinning, I ain't giving God a chance to show no grace. So then Paul said, oh, I know what y'all thinking. Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. Are you with me? All right, here it is. Here we are here now. He says... James says, God will end our temptation. Every time we win, we get blessed. So then James' listeners are saying, oh, then God must be the mastermind of our temptation. Therefore, I'm going to get back to this, but therefore, if I flunk the temptation test, it's all on God. Since he's the one that's using the temptation so that he could give me a crown of life. Are you with me here? Uh, where does temptation come from? Did God send the temptation? Verse 13. James says, let me get this straight. Let no Negro say. When he or she is tempted. What's the rest? I am tempted of God. 
For God cannot be tempted with evil himself, neither tempted he any man. All right? God can't be tempted, and God does not tempt any man. The first thing James lets us know is that temptation in our lives is not God's fault. Huh? Temptation in your life and in mine is not God's doing. Holy is the Lamb. As a, as a matter of fact, you all, uh, what we end up saying is this. Because if God, say it again, if God is the reason for my temptation, then God is the reason I give in. So uh, it, it ain't my fault, it's God's. Let me tell you, in temptation, God is even in our temptation trying to help us get out of the temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I think it's coming up on the board now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. All right, let's read it together. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also do what? Make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So God's part, when temptation comes, God's part is to be there to show us the exit. God's part is to show believers how we could get out of what we're trying to get into. The problem is, when temptation comes, that's the last thing we want to do is find out how to get out of it. Amen. Amen. The last thing we want to know is where to exit. Matter of fact, when the GPS comes on telling us that get off, get, get off now, get off this ramp right here now, we press that button and we cancel GPS. Holy is the Lamb. Now watch this. We, I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about we. We love to blame somebody else for our choices. And this mechanism of ours goes back to the beginning of time. Rarely, rarely, when somebody say that you do something wrong, do we say, yeah, yeah, you know, I did. We, we always looking for somebody else to blame. It ain't never really our fault. So Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 11, Adam and Eve are hiding from God. They're hiding from God because... They've disobeyed God, and they've eaten of the forbidden fruit. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. They're hiding from God. And, uh, and he said, those of you who haven't found Genesis yet, look, look on the board. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree, wherefore I commanded thee? Thou shalt not eat. And the man said, now let me tell you who fault this is, God. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I can tell you what went wrong. I'm going to tell you what went wrong. You ain't got to look at me. Oh, Adam, I'm about you. And no, no, don't look at me. The woman that thou gavest me. Leave that up there. Leave it up there. The woman that, that you gave me, I was asleep. I ain't know that chick. 
I ain't even know chicks existed. I ain't know nothing but a dude. That's all I knew. I ain't even know she was supposed to be here. I ain't know nothing about her. I fell asleep one day. I woke up. There she was. You bought her. You bought her to me. So, so, so you trying to blame me about this tree? It's the woman. Did you? So the first thing he does is implicate God. It's your fault, God. It, it's your fault. And there are a lot of us who try to actually blame God for the things that happen in our lives. Are you with me here? The woman that you gave me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So, so after he gets off God, he gets on Eve. She gave it to me, and then I did eat. Let's go on. Next verse. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent. Ain't no Negro yet said, I did it. Ain't, no, ain't, nobody, ain't nobody yet said, I did it. It's always passing the buck on somebody else. Touch somebody and say, I think he's preaching to you. We hate to face our choices. Even right now, whenever you ask somebody about something that they did, they did it, they did it, they will always try to explain why it's always about what somebody else did that caused them to do what they did. Are you with me here? That, 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 that's our nature. That's our fallen nature. You're going to see before I sit down that you got a new nature. But it is our fallen nature to play the blame game. Are you with me here? James says, uh, God cannot be tempted with evil. God, first of all, he talks about God's holiness and purity. God himself can never be tempted with an evil choice. It, that, that's too much for you to get. I know it. It's too much for you to get. But, but the devil can never present God with an evil choice. He, he, he won't even try it because God is too holy to even think evil. And then James says, neither does God tempt any of us. All right? Then if God doesn't tempt us, yet, we are faced with temptation how often? I need the old, I need the every hour. Yeah, not no every day, not no every day. Amen. This ain't no one a day temptation here. It is said that the average man thinks about sex every six minutes. So what is church, an hour and a half? <laughs> say my name, say my name, say my name, say my name. I'll get to that Wednesday night. Where does temptation then come from? James says, let's look at verse 14. Uh, ba -ba -da -da, let me get back to it. All right. James chapter 1, verse 14. But every man and every woman, amen, include us, pastor. Don't leave us out, pastor. Every man, because the average woman thinks about sex every 10 minutes.
Deep low the foul. Deep low the foul. Let's move. I see we about to tap into something here. We about to we about to tap into something here that I wasn't even ready to tap into. All right. Where then? What is the basis? of our temptation. James tells us in James chapter 1 verse 14, but every person is tempted when he or she is drawn away of what? Own, own, own that part now, own, own, own that part of his own lust and enticed. All right, the devil uses our own desires against us. Are you with me here? He uses our own desires against us. Now, where do, where do desires come from? Desires, Hank, are given to us by God. And desires are normal. Desires are natural. Desires in and of themselves are not good or not bad. De desires, you all, uh, are not sinful. Will you tell somebody a desire is not sinful? Amen. Why you say that, Pastor? We have to have desires in order to live. You can't live. I'm going to prove it to you. You can't live without a desire. You can't live without a desire to eat. Do you know that hunger is a desire? Do you know that, do you know that, do you know that if our stomachs did not tell us, do you know that it would be, and I know that some of us would be happy about this, but it would be Friday and then we'd say, you know what, I ain't ate this week. I just thought about it. I just thought about it. I just thought about that. I had me. I, I had me all week. I just thought about that. So stomach says, stomach says, when it's time to eat, Rah! don't you just hate that if you're in a meeting or something and the room is real quiet. Stomach is trying to remind you that it's time for you to eat, and your stomach embarrasses you in front of everybody. Rah! Everybody in the room be looking around. Hey, amen, amen. Look, I'd rather my stomach growl than to pass gas, by the way. I just. When your stomach growl, you're going to own it. Oh, well, I just haven't eaten today. When you pass gas, you're going to who did, who did that? Okay, okay. Let's get back to it. Eating is a natural desire. Are you with me so far? Thirst, you alcoholics, thirst. Thirst is a natural desire. We would die if we didn't have enough liquid intake. Thirst is a natural desire. Fatigue. Is a natural desire. Your body going to let you know when it's time for you to lay down. I don't care what you're doing. You could be driving in your car down the street. And your body going to let you know it's time to lay down. Is there anybody here ever got sleepy driving before? Anybody? Yeah. Because that's a natural desire. It's time to rest the body. Are you with me here? Sex is normal. Sex is a natural desire. God allowed us to have the sex craving or the sex desire in order to repopulate the world. Amen. I'm telling you now, if sex wasn't a strong desire, wouldn't no little children be here. Amen. A lot of y'all are accidents. Your parents didn't plan you. I'm the fourth child. I'm the fourth child. I'm the last child of my mom and daddy. I'm a fourth child. I'm probably sure they were through after three, but you know. <laughs> Praise God. Sex was a natural desire. They were married. Amen. 
Are you with me here? Hey Amen. I don't look. Don't be looking at me because you wasn't planned. <laughs> you look at these. You look at these countries where there is no food and people are malnourished and ribs coming out and plenty of little babies running around, though. Because God gave us naturally this desire called sex. Are you with me here? It is when we want to satisfy a desire which is good in a way outside of the will of God that we get in trouble. Huh? Did you hear what I said? Ain't nothing wrong with desires. Desires are good. It's natural. They're normal. But when we try to satisfy a desire outside of the prescribed way of God, that's when we get in trouble. Eating is normal. Gluttony is sin. Sleep is normal, but laziness is sin. Sex is normal. But adultery, a word you never hear in church no more, you never hear this word in church, and fornication, that's what the sin is. God has prescribed a way for us to have sex right. Man, 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 dad. holy is the lamb. God's got a way for us to participate in sex the right way. It is only when we participate the wrong way or in a way that God didn't design is where we get in trouble. Are you with me here? James says we are tempted when, let me hear you say when. We are tempted when we are drawn away and enticed. The devil uses our desire to draw us away. Somebody say, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to be. I want to be near the cross. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross. I want to be near him. But what the devil tries to do is draw us away. Look at it. It's right there. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is what? Drawn away. Drawn away from what? The plan of God. Drawn away from what? The will of God. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away. Okay, here we go. More preaching. Draw away in this text carries the idea of baiting a trap. The word enticed, every man is drawn away and enticed. The word enticed in the original Hebrew means to bait a hook. To bait a hook. The hunter and the fisherman must use a bait in order to attract their prey. How many fishermen do I have here? Anybody, anybody that went fishing, anybody? Like eight people, that's all. Man, we got to get back to some country stuff. All right. That's right, y'all fish at J&J. All right, I, I fish. I love to fish. I fish. No fish will bite a naked hook. No hook, no fish sees a hook in the water and say, Whoa, my God, let me go swallow that sharp hook with that barb in it that is destined to snatch me up out of the water. That's not what the fish sees. The fish sees a worm, a leech, a night crawler, a, 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 a minnow. A fish sees some bait. All right, all right, get right here. Our temptations are always baited with something we like. Our temptations are usually as tall as we want them to be. Our temptations are usually as curvy as we want it to be. The muscle structure on our temptation is usually just the way we want it. 
Our temptation usually smells like we want it to smell. It's usually shaped like we want it to shape. Our temptations are usually set up just the way. Now let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. The devil ain't going to tempt you with nothing you don't like. Oh, you like it. Oh, you like it. Oh, you like it. Do you like it? Shake somebody's hand and tell them the devil's got your number. James says, we are tempted when a hook is baited, and it is our own desire, and it is something that we like. While we're headed into temptation with our eyes wide open, amen, ain't none of us deceived, by the way. We know just how this bait is supposed to feel. We know just what that thing is supposed to do for us. All of, now, here's the, here's the bad part about all this preaching up to this point. I ain't said nothing that you don't know. Everything I said, you know. The question is then, how do we win? When we get in that situation next time, because there will be a next time. Do you have 10 minutes for me to tell you? Do you have 10 minutes for me to tell you? This is how we win then. This is how we win over temptation. But, but now it gets a little darker for a few more minutes. Verse 15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it does what? Bring it forth death. T temptation by itself is not sin. Just because you are tempted, nothing has happened. There is no sin that took place. Jane, uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, and Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But he didn't sin. Don't you think now that every temptation, no temptation is sin. Amen. No temptation is sin. The sin is yielding. The sin is giving in to the temptation. The sin is when we act upon or when we go after the bait. Come here, songwriter. Yield not to temptation. Why? Yielding is the sin. Yielding is the sin. But guess what? Let me just show, let me throw, throw this to you. Each victory, every time you win a victory over yielding, it helps you win your next victory when you're tempted. Each victory will help you. Now, we've usually said that each victory will help you win another person. This song ain't about no soul winning. This song is about temptation. And every time you win a victory over temptation, you are apt to win your next victory. Oh, holy is the Lamb. All right, all right. Get to the good stuff. How then can I win over temptation. Here it is. Three quick things. Three quick things and I'm done. In order to win over temptation, the first thing James is trying to get us to do is to consider the consequences. Amen. Touch somebody and say, consider the consequences. Now, you and I have given in to temptation enough to know that temptation is not as trouble-free as it presents itself. Oh, man, I'm by myself. I said temptation is not as trouble-free. Oh, when we see that bait, and that bait is all the way we want it to be, we ain't thinking of no trouble. But all of us 
have messed up enough to know that trouble is, is somewhere. Amen. We may not see the hook. We may not know that the hook is there. It's there. So, and James says, we have to, first of all, if we want to win this victory, we have to know that there is some consequences for yielding to this temptation. All right, all right, all right. Cigarette smoking can start out real casual. Ain't nobody saw no lung cancer. Ain't nobody looked at no lung. Ain't nobody thinking about no lung cancer. This, I'm just being social with my friends. This is just a little alcohol. I don't drink real often. I just drink occasionally, weekdays and weekends. I need me some. I, I need some. I, 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 this ain't nothing. I'm just going to get a little sex. Somebody's going to break me off a little something, something. I got to get these pimples off my face. I got these pimples. God done put all this in me. I'm about to bust. You ain't never. Matter of fact, when the last time you've been in church or on the street or at work and some Negro in front of you just exploded? Boom! Oh, well, guess they ain't satisfied that sex is. It just blew up. Sex presents itself as something so nice. But there is many a tear in this room this morning that if they, could, if they would get the mic and we could all tell the truth, it's a whole lot of pain and a whole lot of broken hearts. Are you with me here? David sees Bathsheba sleeping uh, uh, up on the roof. He sees her. He desires her. He decides, okay, this can't hurt. It ain't nothing bad. I'll have sex with her. Call her husband in from the war. That caused David so much trouble. Had he known all the trouble it was going to cause, he would have left Bathsheba's butt alone. He had to kill her husband. Then he had to turn around and the, the sword never left his house. His daughter got raped by his own son. His other son tried to take the kingdom. All because of a one night stand. Now watch this. Let me tell you what the devil does. What the devil does is the devil tries to act like God is holding out on us. And the devil says, why wouldn't God want you to have this? The devil says, it can't be that bad. The devil says, you deserve this thing. You know that song we sing, you deserve it. You deserve it. That's what the devil says. That's what the devil says. And besides, touch the person next to you and say, and besides, it's your birthday. You've been trying so hard. You've been going to Bible class. You've been going to Sunday school. You've been trying to get up and have your prayer. You deserve it. That's what, uh, don't put Genesis up. Let me just quote it. That's what the devil did to Eve. The devil said, God is holding out on you. God does know that in the day that you eat of this, your eyes will be open and you'll know good and evil. Are you with me here? Uh, the devil always tries to get us to doubt the goodness of God. Look back and see the consequences. Look, 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 just, just, just consider, just say to yourself, this thing, no matter how good it says it's getting ready to be, James says, when it is finished, it's going to cost me. It brings forth death. Are you with me here? And the wages of sin is always death. You and I want life. He who has the son has life. Number two, number two. This is the good part. Now that's all the bad part. The rest is the hallelujah. Amen. We're we at the hallelujah part. Do I have five minutes? 
I mean, you might as well give me five minutes. You endured the worst of it. Amen. The second thing that helps us overcome temptation, because I don't want only one gun in my book, in, 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 one bullet in my gun. I said one gun in my bullet. It won't work like that. I don't want only one bullet in my gun to shoot at and, and think about the consequences, because most of us, most of us, we never think about, we think about the consequences and we keep driving straight on the sea. So James said, let me give you something else to consider. Verse 17, every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is what? No variableness, neither shadow of turning. James says, the next time, here it is, this is good stuff right here. We are faced with temptation. Consider how good God's been to you. Con consider how good God has been to you. Because you see, what the devil is trying to get us to, to, to do is to say, we need to be good to ourselves. That, that's what yielding to temptation is, Kenny. It's me saying, I'm, I'm going to hook me up. I'm going to be good to me. James said, no, you don't have to do that. You just remember how good God has been to you. Okay, okay, that, that, that's a whole lot of stuff. That's a whole lot of stuff. Remembering what God, what does that really mean? Everything you got, God gave it to you. Because every good and perfect gift, God doesn't just give us good gifts, by the way. God's gifts are perfect. Your house, God gave it to you. Your car, God gave it to you. Your eyesight, God gave it to you. Your health, God gave it to you. Our strength, God has given it to us. The job that we work on, God has given it to us. The intelligence that's in our mind, God has given it to us. James says, if we would just stop and think of the goodness of Jesus, if we would just stop and think how good God has been to us, if we would just stop and remember that God has been hooking us up, taking care of us, even when we didn't know that we needed taken care of, if we would just stop and think about how good God is, it helps us to say no to that temptation. I said God's been good to us. I said God's been good to us. God has been good to black people. God has been good to us. We are not the generation that picked cotton. We are not the generation that was in slavery. We are not the generation that had to say no sir and yes sir. We're not the generation that had to sit on the back of the bus. We're not the generation where our wives and our children were raped and there was nothing we can do about it. God has been mighty. God has been good to us. God has been real good to us. James says, James says, use the goodness of God. Use the goodness of God in your favor. And remember that God has been good. So listen, if he's given me every good gift that I already have, and if he's given me every perfect gift that I already have, then whatever this temptation is promising to do for me, all I got to do is wait for God to do it. I need to finish. I need to finish. I, I, that, I, all I, and listen, every good, let me show you one more thing. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and doth what? Cometh down. Cometh down. This word cometh down is a present participle. It means, don't get hung up, it means keep on coming. Not only has God blessed us with everything that we need, but God's going to keep on blessing us with everything we need. How do you know that? Because there is no variableness or shadow of turning. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's been blessing us. He had, he's blessing us right now, and he will bless us in the future. He's going to keep on blessing us. So why should I turn around and yield to this temptation when God has been so good? It is that fact that gave Joseph, turn to Genesis 
39 and 7. Genesis 39 and 7. It's that one fact. You know Joseph, right? Joseph had been thrown. Look this way, it's on the board. Joseph had been thrown in the pit by his brothers. Joseph had been placed in jail. Joseph had a jacked up life. But then God overshadowed him with goodness. It came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. Now that don't mean let's tell a story. That ain't true. We're going to make up a lie and then I want you to stick to the lie with me. That ain't what she said. She said, let's get it on. Watch this. But he refused. How? 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 Good looking woman. Now, this is Potiphar's wife. You know she fine. He can have every woman he wanted. This is his wife. Joseph refused the temptation. How did he do it? And he said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master doesn't even know what's with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because you his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin, you read, against God? Now wait a minute. He started out talking about the master. He said, the master has made me the head of the house. He said, the master let me control everything in the house. He says, the master has really been good to me, but how can I sin against God? Because it wasn't the master's goodness that Joseph was talking about. He was thinking about when he was in that pit, God brought him out. When his brother sold him, God brought him out. When he was in jail, God brought him out. Every time he needed a dream interpreted, God gave him the interpretation. So he's saying, why am I going to mess up the thing I got going with God just so that I could sleep with you? You need to keep in mind how good God has been, how much God has brought you through. When you were sick, he healed your body. When you were down, he picked you up. When you were out, he took you in. When everybody had said you wasn't going to make it, God allowed you to make it. Just remember how good God has been. Um, that's enough. That's enough. That helps us fight temptation. If I would preach a little longer, I'll tell you that the last thing that James says is that, oh, by the way, we've been born again. Look at what he says in the 18th verse. He says, of whom, uh, of whom his own will, he begat us with the word of truth, that we should be the kind of first fruits. In other words, it's because of God that we saved. God did that himself. It was his own will. Did nobody make God save you? God saved you because he wanted you saved. And you and I are the first fruits. Do you know that the first fruits are always the best fruit? God has saved us to be his best children. God has saved us so that he could show us off at our jobs. God has saved us now unto him, I'm done, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us God has put something in you so that when temptation comes you're not facing temptation by yourself you've been born from above and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world you're not touch somebody and say neighbor you're not in this thing alone. I can do all things. That means fight temptation. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Anybody want to say thank you, God? Anybody want to say hallelujah? Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you keep doing. Thank you for how you keep blessing. Thank you for how you keep the doors open. Thank you for how you keep on making a way. Thank you that you live inside of me. And there is nothing that you can't defeat. Thank you.
He lives in me. He lives in me. And because he lives in me, I can do all things. Stand on your feet, everybody. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. Remember now, you're going to be tempted again. And I dare you to just think about the fact God's been so good to me. God's done so much for me. God's going to keep on taking care of me. I'm his child. I belong to him. He put his spirit in me. That spirit got to work for you now. Put your spirit to work. And sick your spirit on your temptation. Just sick your spirit on your temptation and say, get him spirit. Get him spirit. God, we worship you. God, we adore you. God, your faithfulness is great. God, we've lost this battle to temptation so many times. And yet you didn't hold it against us. Yet you still love us. You still care for us. We thank you that today you've given us some weapons, some tools that we have to use the next time we get in the ring with temptation. God, we know that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by your word. I pray now for everybody under the sound of my voice. And I praise you that we're getting ready to win our battle over temptation. We love you in Jesus' name. Turn around, stand up, remain standing, and just tell somebody you are a winner. Tell somebody you're a winner. Hug them, hug them, hug them, hug them. Tell them you're a winner. You're a winner. You're a winner. You're a winner. Go on, tell them. Hug them out and tell them you're a winner. You're a winner. We're, we're not the tail. We're the head. We're not defeated. You're a winner. You're a winner. God's spirit lives in you. You're a winner. You're a winner. You're not defeated. If you're here right now and you're not a member of a church, if you're not a member of our church, you're not a member of any church. Every good and perfect gift, God has sent it to you. You didn't make it today because you're lucky or because you're a good driver. God has been blessing you. If it's right to be in church, it's wrong to be out. If you're not a member of a church, I want you to pray right now and say, God, I need a church. And if this is the church, I'm willing to come forward. God, we pray now for everybody who's not a member of a church, everybody who's getting ready to make this decision. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. We pray now, God, that there will be people from the north, south, east, and west, from all over this building, who will leave their seat and choose you today. Choose you, the God who makes a way of escape from temptation. Choose you, the God who loves us with an everlasting love. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Look this way. If you're not a member of a church, I'll tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to count to three. When I count to three, the members of the church are going to sit down. When the members of the church sit down, don't you sit down. Today is not an accident in your life. God loves you and God led you here. It's time for you to make a decision for God. I know you're ready. Come on, one, two, three. Come on right now, if you're out of church. Come on right now. Come on.